Today we are painting Reaper's Argent Dragon. Notice I didn't say Reaper Miniatures because this thing is freaking huge. We're going to be painting him as a silver-ish dragon. Not a silver dragon because you notice we're starting off with burnt iron. And the key here is to make this thing look not like it's a simple chromed silver dragon like I always see in the artwork. I hate that look. We're going to do something a little bit more interesting here, I hope. After that base coat is established, we're going to immediately start with our shade colors. And color is key here because we want to add some color to this dragon. Starting off with a mix of Stormy Blue, Magic Blue, and Glaze Medium. Didn't have the quite right shade of blue that I wanted, so I had to mix them up. And then the glaze medium, as always, is to slow down the drying time. So putting it on roughly in the recesses and just wiping it off with a finger off of any raised areas. And let me just get this out here now. Uh, you're going to get some bad lighting here and some bad camera angles. It's all because this thing is just so big. It's really hard to record while painting. So you're going to have to work with me here. After that is dry, repeating that process, this time just with some violet color paint. And this is going into the deeper recesses. So the shades go from blue and then change a little bit into violet. For our highlights, we are going with Model Air Steel and Gun Metal mixed equally. And we're going with dry brushing here, and that's perfectly acceptable because we have a textured surface. And doing this is also going to cover up some of our wash, which is purposeful. And that's why we can afford to be a little bit more careless with the wash. Put it wherever we think we're going to need it, and wherever we don't need it, it'll be taken care of in this step. For our final highlight, straight steel applied to individual scales, just to pick out a few of the highlights wherever we want to. And then for full disclosure, I did follow this up with a very thin glaze of yellow ink because initially I wanted a little bit of a tarnished silver look. Uh, however, I decided to go away with that for reasons that will be more clear when we get towards the end. Generally with dragons, what people do is they paint the main body of the dragon, whatever color it's supposed to be, red, blue, green, black, what have you. And then for areas like the wings or the underbelly, you can be a bit more creative with colors. However, because the wingspan on this dragon is so huge, I decided to reverse it. We're going to go with darker metallic colors and non-metallics on the body and then save the silver for the wings. Now, ironically, the only problem here is I ran out of silver. So for our silver dragon and his silver wings, I'm using chrome instead. But they're virtually unnoticeable. If I didn't tell you it was chrome, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to tell. To add some color to our wings, starting off with Badger Minotaur's Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid, which is a very beautiful bluish green color and adding that first going down each of the fingers and then slowly building it up with the color more concentrated at the top of the wings when spraying the ghost tints you got to be very very careful because the stuff is very thin and it dries relatively slowly so if you spray too much uh, running is a very distinct possibility and if it starts to run well, then you've ruined the piece and you got to start all over again. So, very thin coats. Mm -hmm. 
Our next color is blue and we're working our way towards the top of the wings. Now, my plan was to use the Bagetaire blue ghost tint, however, it, uh, it's gone bad, unfortunately. Even if, if you have a lot of paints like I do, uh, what you, or what I should really do, is you need to stir or shake them up about once a year and that will help them last much, much longer. Uh, unfortunately, I only use the Badger every once in a while and the ones I haven't ever used have, well, gone solid. So I had to switch over to Vallejo uh, Game Color Blue Ink and I've added a little bit of glaze medium to it to uh, thicken it up since uh, spraying straight ink out of an airbrush is extremely prone to running, even more than the ghost tint on its own. Finishing off with violet ink mixed with violet paint towards the top, and yes, you read that right. Uh, the reason is because I wanted to get away from the translucency of the other colors and have it slowly blend into a more solid color when we hit the, uh, the thicker areas, the non-membrane area of the wings. So this allows that transition so it'll make it easier to paint uh, the other areas of the model and have them blend in. So now we have the more difficult task of blending in the membranes to the more fleshy portion of the dragon and using a mix of steel and gunmetal here to try to paint part of the fingers, which is pretty much impossible because metallics have metallic flakes, solid flakes in them, and I'm trying to blend it into a transparent surface. And I'm showing you the part that looks really, really bad. Uh, what I ended up doing was a little bit of dry brushing, which actually worked better, and also eventually tried to work more um, of a stippling pattern into it, because as you can see here, it just does not work well. Also, not shown here, but all those little bumps on the wings, uh, they were painted with the same mixture I'm using here, and that helps to visually change the pattern from the wings into the more fleshy portion and also if you're wondering about the tape well these wings scratch extremely easily it's bones material and it weighs a ton and it's a big flat surface so i had to do a lot of touch-up work once this thing was done with all the metal bits established i can really work in the violet colored to get that transition going. So this is basically kind of doing the same thing we did with the airbrush, but we're just using solid violet here uh, because I wanted to recreate some of that violet. We lost quite a bit of it. I didn't put it down far enough uh, once I painted the actual uh, arm area of the wing. You can see how much of the violet we lost. So this is putting some of it back in around the top of the membrane and also right along the arm fleshy bit area of the wing. Now the color on the back spine of the dragon was probably the area I had the most difficulty with. I just really couldn't decide on how to paint it. I started out by mixing violet ink with first gunmetal and then steel and then to chrome and actually reducing the amount of violet ink at each step. Most of that's going to get covered over because uh, eventually I decided to paint it the same way that I painted the wings. Both of these are being painted at the same time and once I finished the wings I realized that the inspirational color I was looking for was the blue-green plasma fluid. So I decided to work that into the mix and then the back spine really started coming to life. The big issue I had with this project overall is trying to decide what I wanted metallic, what I wanted transparent, and what I wanted a solid paint color and ended up going kind of in the middle ground with the back spine. So we have a metallic, we added a little bit of color through the 
inks, which lets more of the metallic sheen through. But now we're using the washes of blue green, working it into the recesses. And that's still transparent, but it's gonna block a bit more of the metallic than the ink would. And then for the deeper recesses, once again, going to our violet paint. And again, all the recesses we've been painting have been painted with violet. Uh, the difference here is instead of going from blue to violet, we're going from blue green to violet. Uh, this area is small enough I decided to just skip the blue portion. And it's tying, really starts to tie everything together. Uh, often with projects, you'll reach a, you know, You'll be struggling with colors and then you'll reach a point where all the puzzle pieces start fitting into place and that's really here is where it really started for me and the theme of the the green the blue and the purple really started coming together you may have noticed that the underbelly color i went with a yellow and that was like the first thing I painted after dry brushing the body. However, as the, pro the project progressed, I realized that I lost all my yellow colors that I was using or planned to use on the dragon. So while I really liked it, it came out very nice. I had to redo it. For the underbelly, we're going to go with a solid blue color, starting off with the steel gray and then sky blue and work our way up to lighter blues. Since this piece is so big and awkward, I had to actually hold it between my legs just to paint it. And i just like to point out, I had the courtesy to put a towel down first, so you are welcome. Now we have our three colors established for this build. Uh, however, that doesn't mean we necessarily have to use them all in uh, the same quantities on each area of the dragon. On the back, for example, I skipped the blue, stuck with the blue green and added a little bit of violet to that. On the uh, underbelly area, we did a heavy blue and I did add some light turquoise here, but it just didn't work out going over the blue. Uh, so I still did it. So the color's still there, but the main color is going to be the, just the blue and the violet. And to get a little bit better transition between those two colors, I did an intermediate color first, working in some blue-violet uh, into the uh, scales a little bit further. And then I reserved the straight violet, mainly just to frame the scales going down the side and a little bit color between each segment. I couldn't decide what color to paint the horns until I really started to get the other areas, their colors established, and ended up just going for 
rather standard horn color. We're starting off with desert yellow and we're going to work in more and more beige color working up to uh, straight beige. Actually I think I added a little bit of white for the tips and then I did go back and I don't remember what color but it was a darker brown color just to add a little bit more definition to the horns because uh, they are a little bit on the chunky side on this model and not too well defined unfortunately. There's lots of various plates on the dragon that need to paint as well, and just brief mention of them because they're basically painted the same way, much easier version though, uh, but the same way as we painted the back spine. So put down some silver or chrome, I believe it was silver, and then just give it a wash of the blue green and then in the recesses work in a little bit of the violet. With all of our colors now established and the model put together, we can finally go back to the body and with everything else in place, I realize now that we need a little bit more color to the body. So in turn, going with another spot wash of just magic blue this time, and then after that hexed lichen in the deeper recesses. It's just another slightly different shade of uh, violet just to mix things up a little bit. And then after that, a little bit more polish to the body itself with a dry brush of straight steel. And that's the reason why the yellow tarnish tint I ended up skipping over because at this point, you don't even see it anymore. And finally, there is our finished ginormous Reaper Argent Dragon. These are the best final shots I can get. Uh, this thing is so reflective, uh, I just can't shoot it well. So it's actually uh, much brighter in person and much more reflective. I had to turn down the brightness quite a bit and reduce the lighting just so you can see everything at one time. He came out decent, but uh, when I started, I had something completely different in mind, but usually when you start working on a project, you quickly realize, well, that's not going to work. Let's try something else, and that leads to something else. But uh, it worked out here at least. And quite ironically, I think we only used silver on our silver dragon on only one small tiny part. At least I enjoyed being a little bit more creative. I think I said in the beginning, I really hate metallic dragons because... There's so many artists that tend to uh, paint metallic dragons as being all the same color, like I said, the chromed dragon. And there's no reason you can't add a little bit more color and some non-metallics in there to break things up. Uh, you know, paint it the same way you would paint a non-metallic dragon, just to be different. As for the model itself, it is on the chunky side. Not as bad as, say, Gorma was, but it's... It's getting there, um, but it has a little bit more detail. Uh, the big problem is the right wing. It sags and actually drags along the ground in the back end. Uh, I did heat it up and bend it back into place at the start of the project, but uh, 
over the intervening month or so, it must have bent back. So there's no real way I can see to fix it. Um, maybe if you do a little bit better job of bending, but it is still sinking at this time. Uh, that's why I'm leaving it dragging on the ground because it's actually supporting it right now. But anyway, there you go. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. And I really want to get back into painting actual miniatures, please. As in tiny. See you next time. Bye-bye. Fun, fun, fun! <laughs> yeah. that, that's nice. Ah!